Hey guys, it's Iceman Traveler. And we're going to be playing some Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero again. It is Christmas Day. And we have gotten snow. And the temperature here is. I think at one point it was negative one, so technically below zero or sub zero. So a perfect opportunity to play some Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero, uh, this time for the N64 system. <laughs> Done two playthroughs of Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero for the PS1 already. Uh, this is a game I got in 1997 uh, I believe it was December no it came out in October you will fail oh, God, it's <laughs> lagging but yeah I believe I, I got it for uh, Christmas and you know I, I like I like bits and pieces of this game I, I like uh, the story structure and how it connects to MK4 uh, but as for the game itself uh, I think, see at this point they were focusing on this game as well as uh, uh, Mortal Kombat Special Forces. I think instead of splitting their team in two and working on uh, two side projects, well technically three with MK4 coming out, I think they should have um, maybe only focused on one side project. And, um, another, another reason for, uh, Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero, you know, not doing as well, is the fact that at this, at this point in time, <clears throat> at this point in time, everything was moving towards 3D graphics and getting away towards, uh, 2D. So that might be one reason game didn't do as, as well as it should have, or could have. I don't think it should have done any better than what it did. It's it's not a, um, it's not a terrible no, game. Mind, you. you know, it's, it's playable, it's beatable. Uh, it does have a little bit of a, you know, it is kind of hard at points. Like overly difficult. You know, taking taking the like a game, the controls of Mortal Kombat, and saying, you know, turning it into a uh, adventure game. Uh, even on paper, you know, there's there's problems with that. They went on ahead and uh, went with it anyway. It's like it could have been a lot worse, but at the same time, it could have been much better. I apologize for the frame drops. I'm, I'm hoping that won't be a consistent thing uh, throughout the run. Maybe that, maybe it'll improve as we go. Okay. Successful in his mission, Sub-Zero escapes from the Shaolin Temples. And returns to the secret Lin Kuei headquarters, hidden high above the mountains of northern China. Grandmaster, in honor of the Lin Kuei, I bring you this sacred map of elements. And <clears throat> pay attention to the font here, because Almost all of the K's look like capitalized K's. Once again, our most cunning assassin and thief is successful. At ease, my Lin Kuei warrior. Greetings, I see the ninja has been successful in retrieving my map, as I have foreseen. Let's get something straight. I am not a ninja, I am Lin Kuei. Scorpion is a ninja. Ah yes, your Japanese counterpart. It's unfortunate that you happened upon him in your battle with the pesky Shaolin monks. There's the K's that are kind of... Scorpion was tipped off. He knew I wasn't breaking into that temple, and if he weren't there, there wouldn't. Uh, okay. 
Element also retains corporate services in case you fail to need his insurance. Well, your peace of mind almost cost me this mission. Enough, Quan Chi. What about our payment? Oh, yes, I almost forgot. In this bag are the bones of your arch nemesis and leader of Scorpion's ninja clan, the Shirai Ryu. And this is the skull's leader of the Shirai Ryu? It most certainly is. I stripped it of its flesh myself. Ha, ah, our ancient foes have been baked once in one transaction. I've personally made certain that every last remnant of their clan has been eliminated forever. See Sub Zero, you can trust a sorcerer sometimes. No, you will use the map on your next mission. Quan Chi has once again retained your services. Fine, give me the details. This map you stole, it shows the way to a temple which predates man's recorded history on Earth for thousands of years. The Temple of Elements has been hidden in what are now known as the Himalayan Mountains of Nepal. This map is the only evidence of its existence. Fine, I get to the temple and then what? What's inside? A small amulet, worthless to you, but let's just say it has great sentimental value to me. If this is so precious, why don't you get it yourself? It never works like that. Things. I cannot enter the temple until the four elements within its walls have been defeated. And I'm not on the best of terms with the gods of your realm, especially your god of thunder. Tell me about these elements. They are the four elements which comprise the very existence of your realm, wind, earth, water, and fire. With your mastery of the element of cold, you have an advantage that no other human has, the ability to defeat the elements. I have foreseen this. Sub Zero scales the gorges of the massive Himalayan mountains. There he discovers the entrance into the Temple of Elements. Oh, wow. Uh, so John Turk plays Sub Zero. John Turk played um, the majority of the ninjas, including Unmasked Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat 3, as well as MK Trilogy. And I believe he also did some, some mocap work for Mortal Kombat 4, where he again played uh, Sub Zero. Uh, of course, in MK4. Uh, well, in MK, uh, in MK3, in Ultimate Trilogy and 4, he played the younger brother of this Sub-Zero. So, he's playing his older brother here. Uh, this Sub-Zero, the older brother, would later be revealed to be... Uh, new Sabbat in MK uh, Deception, many a year later. Waiting on the air gust here to go up. And now we want to head left. I want to get this key up here. Dodge that um, anti-air move. Continue left. We want to jump up here. Sometimes with these jumps, it's better to get a run and go. Okay. Put the key at the bottom. Like I said, uh, this Sub Zero has the same combos as his unmasked version uh, in MK3, as well as uh, as well as Ultimate and Trilogy. Um, he's got like a what is it? A seven hit combo? High punch, high punch, low punch, low kick, high kick, roundhouse. Does a ton of damage, but. Uh, 
for some reason you have to like you you can't input it as quickly as you could in the MK3 version. Now this key will activate the tornado. Don't want to use it just yet. We want to keep going. The bridge will knock you down. I do believe you'll take damage from it. And it's best to run across that little area. And we're filled up with stuff. We don't have room for the key, so we're going to have to use an herb. Now we have room. We'll pick that key up. And we're going to head back up to Tornado. And use the triangle shaped key up here. Alright, so we want to freeze this guy. We want to get this guy on this button. Okay, nice. Run. And grab this. After we make room. Okay, run. We'll avoid that enemy as we're going out the door. Head back down the tornado. Continue on to the right. Alright. So this is a bit tricky. But you don't wanna you don't wanna jump where these are, but you wanna jump where they will be. That's the best way I can describe it. Some graphical graphical issues there. Probably do uh, to the simulator. A lot of these. Again, we're here. Nice. And it works best if you jump when those ledges are like close to you. I don't think if they're way I don't think it'll work. Now these things, these spinny I don't even know what you would call these things. Um, the fans. The fan spoons. So you jump you hit like up and toward and then while you're in the air you pull back and you should automatically like lock on. And sometimes your character will automatically turn to do some drop kicks to your opponent, and sometimes uh, that doesn't happen. Okay, this is Fujin. He's played by the same actor that um, played Kung Lao in the, uh, I believe, the third game, if I'm not mistaken. Again, some frame drops. So you just want to wait for your opening with uh, Fusion. Wait until he goes into the air, do a drop kick, freeze him when you can, uppercuts do massive damage. So when he does this uh, tornado move, you want to duck, sometimes you want to duck and block. Occasionally you'll catch me in up with that, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. You can already see the tornado um, animation there in the back. About almost 50% health, so we got to keep an eye on that. Another drop kick, another... Cool. And that should be it for Fujin. So now you want to run to the left and duck down at the edge here. way to um, survive.
there at the end. I, I don't think there's any other way you can survive that, that unless I'm mistaken. Oh, right. So this is the Earth stage. I'm remembering where I need to go here. I think you can drop down here. Look at these items. Right. Be careful in this area. And I don't think we go down here. I think I just made a huge mistake. And here's here's the, the lesson that this game will teach you is every every tiny mistake. Uh, has has big consequences, and that's that's the thing about this game is that um, you will learn. It will teach you. It will punish you for the simplest mistake. So we there's no way to survive this. You know I could redo that. I could redo this, but. Um, Let's not. Let's, let's keep going. I have. There's nothing else running in the background. I don't know why I'm having intermittent uh, frame drops, but whatever. We're gonna keep going. And watch out with this thing. And we already grabbed those items, so they're not there now. Oops. That stinks. I hope they're still in my inventory. And no, don't go down there. That's that. And here's a key that we need. Anytime you pick up a key in this area, you want to quickly jump away. Because they like to uh, they like to get you with these uh, with these holes. And actually, I think there's one here. There's one particular place where you actually need to stay to drop to, to go to a uh, to go further in to the level. Ridiculous. All right, use the square key. filled up with uh, herbs, so that's good. Hank the right, watch out for these floating monk guys. And yeah, so you wanna you wanna freeze them right as soon as they're meditating out of existence or whatever. And that should kill them. And you wanna check this because I think that's a death. Come on dude. This is the this is the Earth boss. Uh, you want to use uh, drop kicks on him. You might be able to use roundhouses too, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna attempt that right at the moment. Uh, certain attacks, certain attacks will go for you. It'll give you an opportunity to slide underneath him, and then you want to wait a little bit until he's in range to be hit by this. And just rinse and repeat. And now we gotta we gotta get him back into position and to do that we need to be on his left side. Here. 
get back on this side. Yeah, yeah, watch for the falling rocks as he slams the ground. And again, there's an area that's lit, and if he's in the center of that area, then he should be like uh, to take damage. Normally about three steps, two or three steps um, that he takes uh, is enough to cover that area. So if he's at the if he's at the edge, about one or two steps will put him in the center. Three or more steps will take him completely out. Again with the rocks. Oh yeah, okay, he's also got that move, which is not ideal, because you want to avoid that as much as you can. Okay, looks like we've taken him out. But we've still got a little bit left to do in this, uh, in this level. I'm gonna drop that back down again. And you wanna climb on top. We wanna use this key right here. Call it the the bricks key or the plus key or number four, however you want to you know memorize it. I'll use that. Take this. Ride it on up to the top. All right. Hang left. And it looks like okay, it's motion activated or, or uh, what do you call it? Like distance. Get up here, avoid those. Keep going to the left. Climb up to the top, and again, you got one of the floating monks, and just pay attention to him. When he starts to fade out of existence, freeze him, and that will destroy him. Now, we've got to make room for this, and as we just saw, the ground opens up underneath. I was kind of nervous about that. I thought it would open up directly as I got the item, but maybe not. Probably don't need this, but I'm gonna pick it up anyway. Get something don't need. This is the eye. It's temporary invi invisibility. It does not last long, so. And I don't think I don't think it was really necessary right now. Kind of pointless. Pick up what items that you can there and head back. Mm. Gonna make our way up. There's a shield there, which uh, I believe it does something like tem temporary uh, invincibility or something, but we don't we don't know. You get these guys close enough together, you can freeze them together, like I just did, and I forgot them together, together, <laughs> together. Alright, looks like we use the uh, downward triangle key here, I'll lower this, 
Get Garus there, run, and... Yeah. Kind of lackluster. Oh, lovely. This is the water temple. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're kind of like, we start off in the, like, middle left, or the left middle of the, uh, of the level, and you want to make your way up to the upper left area. But to do that, you gotta go up and right a couple times. So we're gonna do this. Gonna go up. I'm gonna pass that first opening. I believe. I believe that's where we get the key. That's like you get it, and then the thing floods. Head up here. Right here, this square door. I'm gonna take that. that that's, uh, I guess you'd call that a three, maybe? I don't know. I'm gonna move left and down. Pass that door again. Bottom. Go left, back down, left here, down. I believe we're making our way down to the uh, lower left area. Okay, it's like we keep going down. There. Okay, watch the eels here jump across them. Continue to go down. Changing music. Alright, so this is where we use the number three key or whatever you want to call it. There's a guard down here we want to take him out. Alright, then you want to get to the middle. Jump on that. You wanna you wanna jump on that before the water comes because I think if the if the water starts to fill up, I, I think it's like an immediate death. So you want to you want to get on that middle as soon as possible. I might be wrong about that, but it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't surprise me. <sighs> so we want to make our way uh, to the left, and if we have enough time, we want to grab this key that's up here and then immediately jump back on. Otherwise, we got to wait for this thing to go to the right and back to the left. Alright, so that looked like a upside down triangle key. Water's draining, so once it drains, we're going to go back to the right. Alright, heading back up. Right here, and again, avoid the electric eels. Grab the rope. Start heading up again. Okay, get off here. Come on up again. Head to the right when you get to the top. Get to the rope. Start going back up. Alright, now the room that we've avoided twice before, uh, this is where we use the upside down triangle key. And now you want to run, and this door is going to shut at the end, so you use the slide maneuver. You grab a hold of the rope, and you want to travel down. If you don't use the slide at the end, you will get stuck on the door and you will die. So travel down, head left, travel down, again. Go left. And we're going down again. Hit 
get to the right at this location. I'll take this guy out. Now this uh, this area can be a little bit problematic because this guy that we just killed, uh, his buddies will show up and they'll just continue to uh, spawn there. So we're waiting on uh, on a barrel or some kind of platform. I don't know exactly what it is. But as we're waiting here, um, these guys will continuously respawn. So now we're going to make fun of them. We're going to punch at them and we're going to do that. We're going to block. Make it look like we're flipping them off or something. And we're going right. We want to stay on the wooden platforms so as to avoid the electric eels or stingrays or whatever. Alright. So we want to wait on our platform again. We don't want to get too um, impatient here. I don't think it's possible to, to reach it. You know, from as soon as it shows up on the screen, you gotta, you gotta wait for it to come in a little bit. Alright. So we want to get out of that mess. Hit the ropes. Head down. Alright, at the bottom here. Head to the right. We can't hold anything at the moment, I don't believe. So we're gonna gonna just totally avoid that pickup. We're gonna hit up. This time head to the right once you reach the top. A monk here. They're fairly easy. Just take them out. And as you can see from the uh, pictograph or whatever on the back, you might want to use the moon shaped key to open this door and this should take us to the uh, the water god, the boss of this level. And uh, the water god is uh, highly susceptible to uh, Sub-Zero's freeze attacks. You want to keep some distance between you and the water god. He's got a uh, uh, sort of a move that takes inspiration from uh, uh, the Glacius Uppercut from Killer Instinct. Don't avoid that. Nice. Let's whittle him down. And that was the boss of the Water Temple. Uh, he has a name. Starts with an S. I don't remember. Alright. So these guys can be a bit tricky. I'm trying to time it right. Try to catch him where you can. Freeze. Take the guy out. Uh, so, so there's some quick monks, and then there should be some stronger monks that take a ton of damage. It's a dip down for me. We want to pick that up. Got the ice clone maneuver. Probably won't use it. We're gonna run here. We're gonna avoid these areas. Now you can stand on the lava, and you won't really take a ton of damage. But if you stand in the lava where the fire is shooting up, um, you will take uh, some massive damage from that. So don't do that. And again, I want to use an item so we can pick up this key. Downward triangle key. Run. Avoid the flames and avoid these, uh, these uh, rotating polygonal. Uh, it almost reminds me of like a, like a 
briar bush. You want to avoid those. Keep going. There's one of the tough monks. And I believe they're played by Brian Glenn, the guy that played uh, Shao Kahn from the MK2 and MK3. I believe it's the same dude. I think he shows up later, too. Could be wrong about that. This is a speedy monk. Come on, dude. Take him out. Continue to the right. Avoid flames. And I think that's a. I think they call him what, a Hulk monk. You know, it's a strong monk. You want to avoid him. All right, so we're going down at this point. Run to the left. stuff right now over encumbered uh, gotta get rid of something and we gotta pick up this key and I'm running out of herbs so that's not good run back to the right there's a uh, I think that's a uh, I think it's an urn I believe is what it's called it, uh, it rebuilds all of your health I wanna try to save that as much as possible Ride these platforms up. Jump over when you're feeling comfortable. I don't think we can pick that up. Oh, avoid the flames. And try to avoid that. Okay. And uh, I thought it would auto lock on, it did not. That's great. Got to use a herb here. Whoa, I'm gonna run across. Avoid any of these death traps. I don't think these guys take damage from the flames. I could be wrong. It doesn't really look like it. That's unfortunate. Alright, yeah, just avoid all that as much as you can. I don't know if that uh, invisibility will be useful in this level or not. And remember not to stay in the flames as much as you can. Now that I got one herb left, it's not good. And uh, yeah, this is a strong mob. They're, they're about a head taller than some zero. Occasionally, kind of gives him away. Alright, flip the switch. Left. Whoa, well, okay. Go in here. Uh, I needed that anyway. Upwards triangle. I'm gonna raise that. Now, there is a way to jump up here without doing all this, but I. I think if you do that, like you you bypass the key that you need to, so you kind of get stuck. Like you have to you have to proceed in this fashion. All right, looks like we got down equals up, and I I think you only need to activate one, but I don't know. And here's the fire god, the boss of this level. And he's the, the final um, elemental boss. He is uh, the only boss that is immune to Sub Zero's ice powers. So we want to take him on just old school. 
drop kicks, combos, sweeps, uppercuts. And I don't want to use any of these. Okay, so we're going to use an urn. See Shinnok's amulet rotating in the background. I guess technically it's Quan Chi's amulet, but whatevs. Sub Zero ascends the staircase leading to what he believes to be the ancient amulet he is looking for. As he approaches, he studies the inscriptions that trace its edge edges and prepares to take hold. Okay, but before he can get to it, an unexpected visitor manages to take hold. The amulet, I have Shinnok's amulet. Who's Amulet? He is my deity, ruler of the Nether Realm, and soon destroyer of your Earth Realm. This is definitely Shinnok's Amulet. What are you talking about? This Amulet is to keep Shinnok's powers in Elder God. When returned to him, he will retain his powers and be freed from his confines in the Nether Realm. Destroyer of all realms, I think you're insane. That Amulet is worth the copper. Believe what you will, Sub Zero. Goodbye, Ninja. Sub Zero watches as the energy dissipates into nothing. Then suddenly, a blue bolt of electricity strikes the ground with thunderous fury. This time, it's a god of thunder raiding. Do you realize what you've done? I was just earning my living. Your clan's ignorance and greed will cost this entire realm. We must now set things straight. Quan Chi could simply be a lunatic and sorcerer. I've never heard of an elder god named Shinnok or that of the Nether Realm. We better start believing in both, because you're going to the Nether Realm. Uh, I'm just that quickly at night in the Nether Realm. I'll do it, Thunder God, and I'll have no choice. And stand back. So, the thing about these um, cutscenes, of course, the N64 didn't have uh, full motion video, they weren't able to program all the uh, the video cutscenes in so they, oh, they use these instead. The um the good thing about the um, text cutscenes is that you can almost take them more seriously. Than the PS1, you know, the full motion videos, because the, uh, the full motion videos on the PS1 version are just so ridiculous. But at the same time, you know, they're they're really enjoyable for the. Uh, uh, I don't want to say cringiness. It's more like just just corniness. Like for some reason, it it comes off as camp when it's not really supposed to. It's supposed to be taken seriously. Yeah, these hammers here, you want to knock your opponents into them, take them out in one hit. These guys are denizens of the nether realm. They, they have green blood, which is interesting. These guys are fairly tough. Uh, once, once we unlock the uh, the ice shatter maneuver, they're they're less of a problem. These guys look like uh, Boba Fett rejects. Yeah, don't run into the gate because that'll hurt you. But you can use it against, uh, against them too if we can get this right. There we go. That was fun. Alright, automatic cutscene. There's nothing we can do at this point. Just get our butts kicked. And as we see, Sub-Zero gets locked into his cell, 
with Scorpion. Of course, he doesn't realize it's, uh, it's Scorpion at this point. Um, I really like the fact that they that they did this, that they threw him in here. Uh, I wasn't really thrilled with them using his ultimate MK3 look um, because it didn't make sense storyline wise I, I think they should have they should have maybe just kept him with uh, with his design that that he used earlier uh, of course that was just a uh, uh, that was basically just a copy of uh, Sub-Zero's look so I'm glad it was something different but I, I wish I wish they would use something different from you know, Ultimate MK3. It just doesn't doesn't fit within the timeline. But of course, if you've played um, if you've played MK11 and um, like you gotten to know. Chronica and how she works, like it it makes sense uh, it makes sense within that storyline. How maybe maybe this was just a moment in the timeline where Scorpion does appear like that, you know? But no I as a kid, I was like, man, man it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't look like that. Phew. Yeah, you almost have to do that run there to, uh, to look that. So this level is pretty straightforward up until this point. So you reach this big wall. We're gonna have to get rid of something here. Use the formula. Get the uh, key card, elevated key card. And for the N64, you want to hit the use button and then hit high kick to go up and low punch to go down. Low punch to go down. Jeez. Number two elevator key cord. This is the first, I think this is the first guy that beat us up. Okay. Dropkick roundhouse. Oh, I'm sorry. Roundhouse dropkick. Back up, rinse, repeat. When he gets too close like this, when he gets stuck in the corner, you gotta slide on him. Pete. It says P6 on his shoulder. I didn't I didn't pay attention to uh, what the number was on the original guy, the first guy. The one that destroyed us basically. Alright, we wanna make our way back to the left. This 
game's insane, man. Like, even the enemies off screen can do damage to you. Okay, this is a special urn that we need to clear this level. Like one time I, I did a run and I forgot it and I had to like turn around and go back. Make my way back to the right. Sub Zero run animation in this game. Alright. Earn of Strength. Use it. Kick the statue down. Run up. Run up the statue. I, lo I love that animation. And here we're introduced to Kia, Jataka, and Serena. Serena is one of my favorite characters. Uh, she's only been in like three games. If you count this game, uh, Armageddon, and um, uh, the one for the Game Boy Advance, Tournament Edition. She needs to get more games. Key, I believe, is played by uh, Carrie Hoskins, the uh, Actress of Sonya in MK3. Uh, Serena may be played by the actress that played Sindel in MK3. That might not be correct. I don't know, I can't remember. I know the actress that played Sindel in MK3. At one point she was dating Brian Glenn, the guy that played Shao Kahn and some of the characters in this game. They were a thing. Alright. Now you can kind of control your drop kicks in that air, so if you think the you think the uh, opponent is going to block your attack, uh, you can kind of pull off a little bit. So I was having some slowdown issue here. But it still says I'm running at 60 frames per second, which is really odd because there's some definite slowdown here. Alright, now this can be tough. Because Dinosaur does the headbutt, you can duck. But if he bites you, ducking won't, won't do anything. So you want to use drop kicks right here. Try not to get hit. Because he'll she will take a ton of damage on him. Alright. That's uh, part of the key that we need. Just want to head right again. And again, you want to watch out for these force fields. So 
now we gotta climb back up from where we dropped down. Uh, all of these floating platforms which makes absolutely no sense really I mean it, it is the nether realm I guess you could try the office that but yeah technically technically it doesn't really make sense You want to grab all these that you can. All right, now this guy, this guy can be a pain. Roundhouse dropkick. Move in, roundhouse dropkick. Ransom of people. Avoid these attacks. You want to jump away. You can run in. Roundhouse dropkick. This guy's gonna drop another key. Pick it up. Let me hug. <laughs> Head to the right. I'm gonna jump back up here. See if I can jump out further to avoid these uh, things right there. Nice. And it's probably, probably the emulator acting a little weird because I don't think the N64 version has slowdown right there, but might be mistaken. I'm pretty sure the PS1 version doesn't. Now this guy can be a bit of a pain because. Uh, I believe he's got like a machine gun type of weapon. You really want to avoid that. Yeah, see that? That'll eat you up. Definitely make sure you get the health pickups when they're dropped. I'm gonna fail there. Might be a good idea to jump off there. So you want to drop down here, this is the final uh, mech that you got to fight. I believe he's got to play with him. Yeah, he's actually not as bad as the other ones. You definitely want to watch out for that Kraken attack, or whatever they want to call it. Ah. Come on, man. Okay. 
Alright, we should be close to the uh, end. seeing the edge of the temple so good to go here. And we only have to activate one key here and then open the door we can run in. Final level. Uh, this level is separated into uh, three floors, I believe. And there's there's three bosses that we have to fight before we fight Quan Chi. We gotta fight the women, Kia, Jataka, and Serena. Actually, I think it's I think we fight. I think it's Kia, Serena, and then Jataka. Could be wrong. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to head, you know, here, up and to the left. Yeah, this is Kia. She's got some boomerang type attacks. One of them, one of them has a, uh, like a spinning tornado kind of attack. It's her. She's not using them against me. Basically, you've got um, so three bosses. There's three crystals that they drop, and then you've, you've got like a top section, and there's a left, middle, and right. And I just picked up the one that goes up at the right side. This is complicated. If you can, um, if you go to my website. Uh, there's a map there that kind of lays out everything for you and simplifies it. It actually gives you, um, it tells you where to go, like in, in what order. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out if you need it. You can also tell which floor you're on um, by the walls in the background. They all have specific shapes. And each one is uh, each one's different. And that shatter attack comes in useful. He frees the guy twice, do an uppercut, they're dead instantly. I don't think you get as much um, experience points, but that's that's like your the last thing you unlock, I believe. Again, now is the perfect time to use that attack to get rid of those guys quickly. And I believe that that background there uh, signified that we were on the third level. So after the thir third level, there's just the top. And so that, the fact that that worked, that indicates that we are on the far right side.
far right upper side. And if we go down into the right here, this is Serena. Ah, okay, Serena is the one. There's the tornado type with the... I believe those are called the Kami. I might be wrong about that. Bladed weapon. If you defeat Serena at this point, it's going to give you the option of uh, doing a fatality move to her. I uh, don't recommend doing it because it's in your best interest to uh, keep her alive. Nice. And Serena's defeated, we picked up the crystal. Now we're going to make our way back down. Ah. Breeze move wasn't working too good there. For. This is a bit of a travel here. We want to go back to that first elevator. I used to play this level a lot as a kid. I would just walk straight, straight to here and just play it. Uh, it's probably my favorite level in the whole game. female assassin of uh, Quan Chi or Shinnok, or both, I guess. They're, I think they're technically considered Brothers of the Shadow. I think. Maybe not. That's the far left key. Or crystal, rather. So those guys freeze them and leave them. And by leave them, I mean it pieces on the floor. If you time it right, you can get past those uh, swinging blades by just running, but um, that doesn't work all the time. And I believe. This is level three. And this should take us to the far left. Yep. 
Okay, so now the far left uh, crystals, far left and far right, are in place. And that leaves the center to be placed, which is uh, going to activate the teleporter. Which will take us to Quan Chi's layer. I meant like second floor, not including the ground floor because that, I don't even I don't even consider that to really be part of the process. All right, we should be dead center now. Don't you wait, pace and latest zero teleports into this chamber. Okay, and the. Um, the PlayStation version had a real, really cool cutscene where the teleporter is activated and Sub Zero is uh, transported into Quan Chi's lair. That's that's one thing that I wish they would have kept because uh, that could have been done with, you know, in-game sprites. Quan Chi is. Offering Sub Zero a place alongside, you know, Shinnok and Quan Chi, which if you've played MK Deception, you know that's kind of like the Elder Sub Zero's, uh, like his uh, final moments. You know, like he's he's kind of taken over. He becomes a brother of the Shadow uh, against his will. He becomes Noob Sabat. So Quan Chi is highly susceptible to uh, ice attacks. He's not not all that bright about it. He does have some fireball moves and teleport attacks. For the most part, you can catch him off guard. Once you get him down to about you know 90% defeated, Serena, if she's still alive, she'll come out and uppercut him off his bridge. Why did you help me? You are still immortal. That means you can escape the nether realm. There won't be anywhere to go if I don't get the amulet back. Take me with you. I've waited an eternity to escape. You don't understand. I can't leave without the... At that moment, a searing beam of energy cuts through Serena's chest. She screams with pain as she falls into Sub-Zero's arms. Serena... Who are you, old man? Uh, I love that. It's funny. It is I, Shinnok. Sh Serena was dealt with as I would have dealt with all my children in this realm. But you, Sub-Zero, will be treated as a bitter enemy. Bitter enemy. The final confrontation. This is the final boss. So now Sub-Zero is like... It's personal, man, you know? You, uh, you killed my would-be girlfriend. <laughs> Alright, so you're waiting on Shinnok to throw the fireball. You freeze him. As he throws it, you run through the teleporter and come out the other side. You run up behind Shinnok to hit the use button. And then that happens and you run out. <laughs> and Shinnok is like, no! Light and warp space converge as the silhouetted form of Sub Zero comes bursting through with Shinnok's amulet in hand. He lands with a thud onto the rocky floor at Maiden's feet. Smoke billows from his body as he struggles to get up. Out of breath, he does his best to speak. Here, the amulet. <laughs> Impressive, Sub-Zero. Perhaps you will reconcile your reckless past after all. 
That's it. Not even a thank you. Thank yourself for undoing the problem you created. One question. Quanchi told me that you sent me because my soul was tainted with evil. Is that true? You are a superb warrior, Sub-Zero, but only you are in control of your destiny. Not even the gods can alter your chosen path of life. Was that a yes or a no? That was a yes, but only you can change it. Mist all but covers the Mongolian ruins as the sun struggles to rise from its slumber. I vow to serve and obey the Lin Kuei. Welcome back, my warrior. I have a new undertaking for you. It seems your recent exploits have caught the eye of yet another sorcerer. I'd like you to meet the retainer of your services. His name is Shang Tsung. He would like you to compete in a small tournament called Mortal Kombat. And this is where, you know, storyline-wise, Sub-Zero would, uh, would go to the tournament. Um, this, uh, this timeline, it would, it kind of seems like Shang Tsung, uh, sought Sub-Zero out, which is how the MK9, the reboot, kind of portrayed things. In the original game, Sub-Zero's bio stated that, like, he was given a large sum of money, uh, to take Shang Tsung out, that he was there to, uh, assassinate Shang Tsung, and I always thought, you know, they, they, they tried to make that Sub-Zero a villain later on, but it always made sense that he would be there to take Shang Tsung out and to kind of be on the forces of, of Earthrealm, uh, because Shang Tsung's whole thing is, you know, hey, we want to win this tournament, and so, you know, Outworld would take over, and, and so basically, like, the Lin Kuei... Um, from my point of view, my thinking, like they would immediately become a threat to Shao Kahn, you know, other than, you know, maybe he could, he could buy them and, uh, you know, keep them in line. But you would think that just for their own benefit that, you know, it's, it's their earth realm. It's, it's their, you know, uh, universe or, or, you know, planet, whatever, uh, you would think it would be in their best interest to, uh, you know, take care of it, but whatever, I, I guess in the search for money, maybe they lost track of things. So do I do I recommend anyone playing this game? Uh, no, no, not really. It's it's one of those things like it's a it's a personal thing for me. Uh, Christmas '97, and it just it takes me back to uh, it takes me back to that time. And it's something that I, you know, I never could do anything with when I was a kid. It would, it would like, yeah, it was, it was just too much for a 13 year old me. So to be able to, you know, do something with it now, um, it, it feels like maybe I've progressed with it. Like, like I have closure with it and, and now it's kind of fun to revisit if that makes sense. I'm, I'm no longer tormented by, you know, like you, you own this game, but you can't really do anything with it. But, but would I tell people to play it? No. 
you can try it out if you want to, but I, <laughs> I don't recommend it. You're not, you're not missing anything by not playing this game. But I appreciate everybody uh, watching me as we uh, dug into the game one more time. It's probably the final time I'm playing this, unless you know, there's there's that that Genesis version that uh, that was made. Um, I don't know if I've, I can't remember if I tried that or not. I know it just it looked horrible, um, but that might be something I can look into at a later date. So, again, uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have any games that you played, you know, or that you got for Christmas that you were really hyped for and you were really excited to play, and then you played it and you were like, "Man, this is garbage." Uh, let, let me know if you have any experiences like that. I'd like to know. Alright guys, take it easy. See you next time.